Today we're going to learn how to analyze an ellipse given its parts. Now you have to remember that in an ellipse we have two sets of equation. One when your major axis is along the uh, x-axis which is given by this graphic display right here and the other one is an ellipse that has a major axis along the y-axis. Now in the standard equation of an ellipse with a major axis along the horizontal line our denominator for x will be a higher value compared to this ellipse right here. So the difference between the standard equation of an ellipse with a major axis along the x-axis and the y-axis is the bigger value holds the major axis of your ellipse. So this is what we will use today in constructing or writing the standard equation of an ellipse given its parts. Now we're also going to use this formula right here that we used on the previous lesson for finding the foci. So c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared will be used in our example today. Now let's find the standard equation of an ellipse given its parts. Now in this ellipse we have the foci at 0, 1 and the other foci at 4 and 1 with a major axis of length 6. Now to find the standard equation of this ellipse we need to first graph the given parts. So we have the first foci at 0, 1 and we have the second foci at 4, 1. Now we can find the center of this ellipse by finding the midpoint of your two foci. And in this case, the midpoint of your foci is at 2 and 1. So it's all about counting the number of units of your foci to find the center of your ellipse. Now, for your ellipse with a center at 2, 1, we know that the value of h and k is going to be 2 and 1. Now, one major thing that you need to understand about the foci is you can find the value of c in your formula c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared by finding the number of units of your center away from your foci. And in this case, you have c is equal to 2. So now that we have c is equal to 2, all we need to find is the value of a and b in the standard equation of your ellipse. And to do that, we will use our major axis. The major axis is said to be length 2. And in an ellipse, the major axis is equal to twice your a. So by using this formula, we'll be able to find a in your major axis. So the major axis is equal to 6, so you can have 2a is equal to 6. Finding the value of a is by dividing 2 on both sides, so a is equal to 3. So now that we have c, which is 2, a is equal to 3, we just need to figure out how to find b. And to find b, we will use the formula that we used on the previous lesson. So we'll use c squared is equal to a squared minus b squared. And to find b squared, just replace c and a by 2 and 3. So we have 2 squared equal to 3 squared minus b squared. Therefore, by using a uh, um, solving equation, for this particular problem, b squared is equal to 5. Now, we don't need to take the square root of both sides because in our formula, b squared is supposed to be squared in the equation of an ellipse. So we'll just leave it as that. So now we have c is equal to 2, a is equal to 3, and b squared equal to 5. Now, we remember that the equation of an ellipse is x minus h squared all over a squared plus y minus k squared all over b squared equal to 1. So we already have our a and b, and by direct substitution, using the center at hk, the standard equation of an ellipse will be given by x minus 2 squared all over 9 plus y minus 1 squared all over 5 equal to 1. And that's how we find the standard equation of an ellipse given its parts. Now, on our second example, we will be using a different set of equation. Now we're going to have the general equation of an ellipse given by x squared plus 4y squared plus 6x minus 8y plus 9 equal to 0. Now we're going to change it to its standard form. And to change it in standard form, you need to remember how to complete the square because we will use our scale in algebra in um, performing the completing the square method to find the standard equation of this ellipse. So to do that, we just need to group all the x's together, all the y's together, and we will get rid of the constant in our equation and put it on the other side of the equation. So now we have the group of x squared plus 6x plus a number plus 4y squared minus 8y plus another number equal to negative 9 than the two numbers that we're going to find. Now to complete the square, we just need to um, factor out 
our 4 from the second parenthesis because we need to have our leading or our quadratic term to be um, equal to 1 or the coefficient will be equal to 1 so we need to factor it out first. So now that we have our x squared and y squared by itself, we can start completing the square. So we just need to find a way on how to get the number to add to our two parentheses. And to do that, we just need to get half of the middle term and then square it. So for the first parentheses, half of 6 is 3, square of 3 is 9, and for the second parentheses, half of 2 is 1, and square root is equal to 1. So our next equation will be equal to x squared plus 6x plus 9 plus 4 multiplied by y squared minus 2y plus 1 equal to negative 9 plus 9 plus 1 times 4. So remember that we need to multiply 1 by 4 because of how we factored it out a while ago. So now that we have completed the square, we can factor it out because we know that x squared plus 6x plus 9 can be factored out to x plus 3 squared and y squared minus 2y plus 1 can be factored out into y squared minus 1. So it will have x plus 3 squared plus 4 times y minus 1 squared is equal to 4. Now the equation of, of an ellipse needs to be equal to 1. So to do that we need to divide all the terms by 4 to complete our standard equation. So to uh, multi divide it by 4, we'll have the equation equal to 1 and we'll end up with x plus 3 squared all over 4 plus y minus 1 squared all over 1 equal to 1. And that's how we can change the general equation of an ellipse or any conic section for this matter and changing it to its standard form.